Yeah, I make this as an unofficial video. Yes. Um, just talking to myself, maybe. Maybe I won't publish this one. Um, just thinking about uh, this problem of the simplicity of some of the basic framework that we. Oh, fuck. Pricker. Oh, um, that we live in. Um, the frame is this biological mass. Uh, that's the frame of our existence, is the biomass. The first frame that we see, the biggest frame, the loudest frame, whatever you want to call it. And that frame is in the, the frame of the universe. You know, planets, uh, matter being created, then suns, uh, the hundred and so elements that make up atomic structure, uh, and then are converted into compounds that all this stuff is. And, um, you know, this is, this is the primary reality. So evolution is, well, God, I am going to get killed here. That was really very close to not a good sort of thing. Anyway, um, you know, not actually functioning very well. This damn stroke leg is <laughs> it's going all funky on me. It really hasn't been bad, but uh, stress, you know, brain activity uh, narrows the functionality of the stroke leg because it rewrote uh, walking on territory I like to use for thinking. And so when I'm thinking or stressed, the funky leg goes funky. Um, anyway. It's just kind of a funny thing to live with, uh, because wow, I must be thinking really hard. Because man, it is totally not, you know, it's a uh, silly walk, you know, and all. Anyway, um, all right. So, so this this is the vital truth, the big truth, the monstrous truth in the house. And uh, I sort of thought of this. I was going to play the clip, but I just never got around to it. Um, but you know, there's a scene in Jurassic Park, you know, with a Tyrannosaurus comes in, grabs everything, throws them around, blah, blah, blah. And you're thinking about just the idea that this is the nature of nature. It just makes these machines, right? And it's a really interesting machine. There's no getting around that. Uh, it's got all these capabilities. Um, you know, it does this reproduction thing. It has organs for that. It's got all these, you know, mechanisms for surviving and it's just it's just but it's just a machine and it's just a machine created for that simple purpose to you know seed another machine to just make more of that machine and you know there's a there is this moment you have in, in when you're thinking about something where you're just like oh that's just too clear too obvious and you have that sensation of of, you know, oh, that's it. That's that's all there is. There's nothing else. Or, I don't know what you call it, Eureka or Epiphany or whatever. But it's just a, a moment, a sensation of, you know, uh, uh. And, and, but it's, and it's not like you can recapture it. Like I could go back and I could say, oh, and I won't see it as clearly as I saw it in that moment. And that's sort of one of the liabilities is that you can't always grab it at the right moment where you're seeing it in the context and you're seeing so clearly the cells reproducing and the, the mechanism of, of the machinery of it and the fact that it's just energy you know that's just these atoms that are just collections of energy that are tra trapped in orbits and that the orbits get combined into chem chemical compounds and those chemical compounds have unique stickinesses and, and uh, behavior on spins and rotations. And those rotations, you know, and in the end you end up with something like this. Some physical form, you know, that's functioning in the world. That's walking and talking. Uh, not hearing very well, though. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Um, and, and uh, yeah, so, so... I mean, that's the real perspective. That's the real core of everything that's happening. That's the context. That's the necessary frame that's always got to be here in front of us. 
we've always got to see everything in this context of understanding that's the mechanism uh, because it it's a lie it's a distortion to be ignorant of it to ignore that basic function that basic um, I mean, it's important. Origins are important. Uh, and the dynamics of, of uh, what's imposed by that history, by that uh, genesis, um, to, to get to a point. It's just that context is so much of understanding this moment. This moment isn't, isn't I'm not being true to it. I'm not being honest to this moment if I'm not acknowledging the context that, that this moment is built on. Four billion years. I have, I have cellular membranes. <laughs> I have the biological parts that are essentially four billion years old. Uh, you know, in terms of the chemical composition. Uh, they've been making the same pieces for a long, 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 long time. And, uh, you know, some of these pieces have just been passed down and passed down and passed down over and over and over. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so I think I'll go for a run. <laughs> That'll be my... The, the, the context to the run is, yeah, I'm caught up in this world that I have to live in. Um, and... Uh, you know, and have this psychology built to play a game of some kind, some kind of game. And this is the game they gave me. Uh, you know, white man in, you know, suburban America. And so I'm playing the game. <laughs> you know, but I'm doing it with the knowledge that the real game is this shit. And, uh, you know, the, the biosphere. And, uh the context uh, of the motivational mechanism. This is the real game. Uh, the real context. The real engine of the whole damn thing. Uh, you know, you're just... If you're just playing the narrow game, the narrow path, yeah, you're missing a big, giant world that's swirling around you. Uh, that is the real world. This is... This is just subjective crap. Uh, that's the real universe. Anyway, enough. So, maybe more later and such. Yeah, right, continuing where I left off, probably. I don't know, something about uh, really appreciating the idea of the reality of evolution. And uh, if you can actually do that, you know, actually sense it, sense the you know, the reality of evolution, the fact of it. I even mentioned in my last video, skeptical heretic, you know, this idea that, it, you know, occurred to me when I was very young, you know, that evolution is, I understood it as a reality before I understood it, you know, in the selfish gene model sense, just in the, the fact that it was this growing stuff and it just always just kept fighting with itself, you know, that the, there wasn't a distinction between the blue beetle and the red beetle. And uh, it was just silly for the red beetle to eat the blue beetle. <laughs> to cause it harm and stress and hardship and all that crap. <clears throat> so anyway. Um, but yeah, it's really appreciating that. How did, how did the spider web give away there? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's a giveaway. <sighs> Stupid damn frickin' crab spider. <laughs> Bit me the other day. Anyway, um, no consequence, fortunately. Uh, gee, this is just so overgrown. <laughs> Somebody ought to do something about it. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's really hard to, like I said, I mean, you have, the, you have moments. I've had moments. You know, where you see a certain prehistoric animal, you see something, and you're just like, oh, man, these machines. You know, it's just these machines created by this biology. And... Uh, you know, it, it's, you know, all just for this one purpose. You know, all just to, 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 to do this gladiator thing, to do this contesting with each other, to get into the future, 
to, you know, that's it. That's all that's happening. That's the, the whole, the whole biosphere is just made out of that one simple mechanism. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, they're just all, you, you know, you can almost see it. I can almost see it, visualize it in my brain that they're just growing out of a bacterium. The idea of this little replicating cell and it just evolves into these complex, you know, tool encrusted. You know, it has its bark and, you know, all, everything's just tool encrusted, uh, weapon encrusted to fight the war. You know, to have your shields and your swords and, um, and that's all that's, and it's just for this stupid little single, you know, the, the, uh, the replicating cells, whatever they're called, I can't remember. There's a word for them. And that's it. I mean, you're all, you're doing this for a freaking, you know, for, for a cell, uh, you know, for a cell containing some DNA to replicate that cell. And nothing else is going on here in terms of the mechanics, the, the initiation of it, the, the mechanism. And uh, we're sitting here with our tool of a brain and, uh, you know, just projecting some, some other story onto this story. So we have this basic story and nobody's living in that reality. Nobody's, you know, so as far as I can tell, um, really recognizing the real game, the, the maze in the maze in the maze, the maze that's really the maze. They're all in these little internal mazes of, you know, getting along with their wife and, you know, getting, making, get a job promotion and, you know, all the little, the little mazes. And the big maze that we're playing seems lost in all this conversation about what it is to be human and, uh, you know, what the function is. So, so, yeah, it's all these projections based on the personal... Um, Inter, you know, the little games we're playing, um, you know, to uh, comfort the organism. So we're just so caught up in the subjective game, and there's no, no recognition of the objective game, the big game. And uh, everything else is just a projection, a projection of purpose and function. The purpose and function, as defined by the reality, is... is insane in a sense it is non-coherent logically um, replication for the sake of replication it's not a logically coherent it uh, you can't justify a thing with its mere existence there has to be more to the story and so the more that people have added is that oh yeah we're 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 interesting you know we're <laughs> you know <laughs> we're bizarre. We're, you know, just t too um, compelling in the fact that we're tyrannosaurus in this very refined way. You know, we're doing the little pinky out thing, and therefore, somehow what we're doing is validated. It's, uh, even though it's uh, an accident of the function, like we are the aberrant, we, we see what the, the real game is, the the great white shark in the ocean, the Tyrannosaurus ruled the earth for 300 million years, or 250 million anyway, uh, something like that. Um, you know, that's evolution. Uh, that's real evolution. And we're this little nuanced segment, section of, of what the thing can create. But we're just ego we're just we're just sitting there saying projecting saying okay we're gonna we're gonna claim we're valuable because we're interesting we're interesting to ourselves so it's again it's a self-fulfilling declaration of function and it's all you know it's not really the subject of this video but I'll throw it in here because it's sort of a junk video but um you know this is a the argument is, is, is that if, if I did, um, it, I mean, I don't want to claim everybody's a racist, but I'm just saying if, if, if I denied the existence of your race in the future, would you have the same investment in the existence of the human race? 
So if uh, white people were not going to exist in the future, and would just be darker people, would, would the average white person have the same investment in the human race? And it, the argument really goes to um, the fact that we don't miss the non-existent Martian or the non-existent Venetian, that we don't even consider the fact that we could do genetic experiments and create other living things that had different uh, tools and that their tools might be more pleasurable and more fun than our tools. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not that hard to imagine. Uh, the, you know, even now, just taking the best of the human race, so to speak, and uh, breeding them. Um, and yeah, we don't think in those terms because that would be logical. And the premise, our premise of our value has nothing to do with logic uh, or being reasonable. So anyway, getting back to the core thing, again, you know, it's that kind of thing where you just can't, it's so hard to, there's things you can't make. It's like, it's like you can say 50 million people died in World War II. And you could just say, you know, and then you could think about their families and all the collateral damage. Uh, you can think about drunk driving. You can say 30,000 deaths, uh, you know, 200, 500,000 injuries, you know, paralyzed kids, all kinds of horrors. Uh, can you really appreciate it? Can you really internalize it? Uh, make it uh, fit it in your brain in terms of recognizing the dimension of it. And, and I guess what I'm trying to say is that I, Evolution has that problem too. It's hard to fit the the mechanism of it. The fact that it's you know you go deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole, and you just get to this energy moving and energy coalescing like a little water drop, and the water drop gets dirty, and then the dirt it creates a shield, and then the shield becomes. Uh, 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 a mouth, uh, an ass, uh, you know, it, it, it gains a shape, a funnel, a tube, uh, you know, and then, I mean, it's just so, you know, when you roll that ball, you know, you roll the, the whole mechanism through, it's just so hard to get a, a real feel for just how um, insane the process is, in the sense that there's no there's nothing in the process that's going to guarantee anything reasonable. There's no, there's no limiting factor that says you can't do this because it's too crazy, it's too stupid. There's no governor. It's just uh, machines. And the machines can be end up sentient as we ended up. It's a possibility, obviously, because it happened. <laughs> it must be a possibility. I don't think it's a likelihood and you could run evolutions you know a million times and it won't come out this way um, you know it should you know probably if life did exist in the universe a thousand times out of a uh, I mean one time out of a thousand you might get to um, you know a, a terrestrial um, mobile life form uh, even neurology you know, going from the chemical transfer of information to the electrical transfer, that might not be a very likely uh, um, adaptation, change. So just to preach, that's another subject in itself, just the, the uh, realizing the, just how eccentric, not eccentric, just how unlikely, improbable our existence is just how uh, dependent it is on so many, four billion years of, of um, happenings, events, and some of those events being just insanely unlikely. Um, and, you know, that's when we get to the subject of the development of the human intelligence, which itself is, it wasn't incremental. The small change a hundred thousand years ago uh, made all the difference. 
And the difference between us and the other primates, the other great apes, let's say, is just a subtle change in brain space. <laughs> it's not a huge change. It's a small change. And uh, yet, look at our bigotry. Uh, there's nothing rational in it. The difference is uh, insignificant in terms of anything important. Uh, everything about us that is valuable is caught up in our, our emotional notions. It's what people live for. And yet, they all trivialize those same mechanisms, you know, in all the other mammals. Hey, pup. Uh, so, what, you know, other mammals, you know, we put them on a leash. Well, not that we should, well, not that we don't have to, but, uh, frankly, people are pretty good to the dogs. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll just call this a junk video of sorts and <laughs> leave it at that. I'm just kind of rambling, uh, still just fighting with, um, trying to put into words, trying to describe in some way that makes it meaningful, uh, the fact of what a Tyrannosaurus represents, you know, this big, humongous, <laughs> you know, tool-enabled flatworm uh, the, you know, that is in itself just a, you know, another um, complexification of an amoeba, you know, which is in itself just a, 